Next Monday, February the 6th, will mark the inaugural Bridget's Day public holiday in Ireland. So, News Talk reporter Sarah Madden has been exploring the various tales of our, what you might call our matron saint. She's also been questioning her significance in our country today, and she sent us this report. It's a bright and crisp January afternoon in the loud town of Dundalk. Along with schoolgirls, regional politicians and interested locals, I'm attending one of the countless events taking place this week in the run-up to Bridget's Day. So how do we know who Bridget truly is? And Dr. Karen Ward is an author, psychotherapist and lecturer in Celtic spirituality. Complete with curly red locks, staff and a cloak, St. Bridget fan Karen fits the bill nicely. Bridget died on the 1st of February. Um, a lot of people think the 1st of February is her birthday. It was actually the day she died. She's said to have been born in 451 in Fawhurst, County Louth, to a pagan chieftain father and his Christian bondwoman. When um, her parents wanted her to marry as a very young girl and she said, no, no, there was no way she was going to do this. So she rather shockingly plucked her eye out. All the suitors ran away and her parents realised the depth of her, her intention to start a spiritual community and they said, yes, yes, okay. Then she promptly puts her eye back in and with their blessing, off she goes down to Kildare to do that. The activist Melanie Lynch and the Her Story movement worked tirelessly over the last few years to have Bridget remembered in the national calendar. But according to Karen, the timing now couldn't be more perfect, with Progressive Ireland finally ready for this maverick of the past. The key thing is equality and inclusivity, which are very much watchwords of today. So her community was men and women. Her right-hand woman was Dar Ludak, and she um, was said to share a bed with Bridget. Now, some would translate that as, well, they lived in cold, dark, damp climate, and maybe it was for heat. But then there were others who say, well, maybe they were a lesbian couple. So again, there's an evolution of her life that's relevant to us today. However, February 6th has not been called St. Bridget's Day, but rather Bridget's Day, a minor distinction with a big difference. I think there's a greater awareness now that Bridget started off as a as a pagan goddess, but very few people would be aware of, of her origin story. Ellen Ryan is the award-winning author of Girls Who Slay Monsters, daring tales of Ireland's forgotten goddesses. So Bridget was also a mother and a wife. She also went to battle. You know, she created the whistle, but she also uh, created keening, you know, an ancient art of sound healing. So essentially, you know, one of our oldest examples of a working of a working mother. From women walk the city marches to boob cup making classes, Bridget's Day celebrations are stoking the fires of Irish feminism. She was also a goddess of reinvention. She was initially a goddess, then she became a saint. And actually, what a lot of people don't know is that she was then adopted into um, Haitian voodoo culture as a death loa to sort of shepherd souls uh, to the afterlife. And I think that has such parallels for us in our lives now uh, more than ever, because there was a time where women... They got married, they had children, and really that, that was the end of their personal journey. And nowadays, we're seeing women reinvent themselves constantly throughout their lives. And I think that's very, very empowering. And that's something that Breed, Bridget, was doing thousands of years ago. And we're only really maybe seeing that and interpreting that in her story now. So, yeah, I think there's a lot more work that needs to be done though Anthony Murphy, at least, is making a start. Along with artist Richard Moore, Mythical Ireland founder Anthony has created a Camino-style pilgrimage now being dubbed Bridget's Way. We were investigating a long-distance alignment of sacred sites, so we noticed that the Hill of Tara and the Hill of Slain and Mount Oriel in County Louth were all precisely aligned. I extended that line and found that it went all the way to the well of Bridget at Fahart, very, very precisely. When I extended it in the other direction, it goes all the way to the Curra in Kildare. And really joining the two places most 
strongly associated with Bridget. And they meandered down the country lanes on the pilgrimage all the way from Forhart to Kildare over a period of nine days. The Bridget's Way pilgrimage is not just walked by locals and Irish people seeking solace in their heritage. Anthony says Bridget and the sacred sites associated with her are drawing tourists and pilgrims from all over the world. I've been doing private tours of Ireland's sacred sites for many years now. And yeah, I would say that there is an upsurge of interest. As I said, she's a very, very powerful character. In fact, I think that Bridget has an opportunity to do for Irish culture in general more than Patrick ever did. If you look at Patrick and how powerful uh, fest- festivals St. Patrick's Day, it's become almost like a week of celebration. And Bridget was in the shadows all along. Now there's an opportunity for some balance to come back into it. And I've no doubt that Bridget will draw them in, as it were. Celtic Wheel founder Mary Kennedy also believes Celtic spirituality is resonating worldwide. She's preparing to host an online Imbolg celebration with almost 200 women from as far off as Australia and even China. Imbolg is a beautiful festival originated from a pagan festival, Imbolg, meaning in the belly, and that refers really to the used milk coming in before the lambs were born. When you attune to cycles, we know there's a time for darkness, a time when we winter, when we go through hard times. And then after the darkness comes the light of spring. And I think that's a massive in terms of where we are in the planet, in terms of humanity. You know, we are in dark, hard times, crisis everywhere around us. And yet if we can attune to what our ancestors knew, that wisdom, we can know that the dark will give way to the light and that will help us become more resilient in these times. So if the light shows in Galway and fire dancers in Nace don't appeal to us, how can we celebrate Imbolg or Bridget's Day at home or by ourselves? And then there's the great tradition of Brat Bridge, where you put the cloak out uh, Bridget's cloak has a great, a, a lot of mythology around it, um, both as saint and goddess. And on the eve, which would be the 31st of January, you place a cloth out or a ribbon. And Bridget is said to walk the land and bless it. And then it, it imbues her healing. Oh my God, there's so much. Uh, the traditions of going to the holy wells and of washing away the winter with the, with the, the water of the well. You know, you wash away the the darkness, because this is the time when, you know, there's just the annunciation of spring. There's a new light. There's more birds singing. If you put your attention on it, you can really feel it, but it's not that obvious. And so that's what this is all about, is tuning to the new beginnings, new possibilities, even when things feel like they're still bleak and dark. This year's Law of Fela Bridget has been embraced with a fervour. But far from being a consequence of novelty, Mary Kennedy believes Bridget signifies a reimagining of Ireland of the future. I think it's it's a really beautiful honouring of, of an evolutionary moment for all of us, men and women. And also the feminine is returning. You know, the feminine parts of all of us with your no matter what you identify as in terms of your gender, you know, the part that knows how to be slow, that's very connected to nature. And I think that's what's really I see as the significant piece for when we mark Bridget's Day, that it's really that sense of we are evolving past the what 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 I would call the patriarchy, which is nothing to do with men, but we're integrating the feminine aspects of ourselves as well as the masculine aspects. That to me is what Bridget also signifies. She was fire and water. She was a maverick. She was a doer, but she was also deeply connected into her divinity, into nature. She represents all of that. And she is bringer of the new dawn. She is, I feel, also a harbinger of a new way and uh, how we organize ourselves in society too. And that report on St. Bridget from Sarah Madden. Now, some